Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New Year Best You Dream Big Summit. I'm your host, Elizabeth Hamilton Garino, and I'm here with the wonderful Indiana Greg to kick us off. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I feel I, you're known for your hats, and I love your hats. So uh, I thought we'd just kick off with some fun hats. I don't know which one I should wear. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't know if I have a lot of hats. Hang on. <laughs> the thing about hats, everybody, is when you don't have Botox and you're in, we're in our 50s, we're moms of, how many kids do you have, Indiana? Do you have four I kids? Have a glass. How uh, many kids I, have do you three, have? I have three kids, five cats, and two dogs. Yep. And I have four kids, two dogs, and three cats. So, and we're, I'm 53. You're, are you 50? 48? 50, 51. 51. Okay. Well, I have no Botox, and so here's my first time. I don't have Botox either. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Cover up the wrinkles. That's kind of the next generation down that, it, that it, like, we're really... No, the Botox, yeah, I'm not sure I like that one. Hang on. I think I might put my Georgetown one on. You're going to change hats? Yeah. What do you think? I'll just, I'll, I'll change mid three because I only have three. <laughs> it's snowing here. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing in the pits. It's, I'm in Maine. It's just snowing, so... <laughs> Anyway, um, well, you know, I have a Georgetown hat on because our kiddo transferred to Georgetown. And he plays baseball there. Okay. And while this okay. isn't a baseball hat, it works. Anyway, so our people are starting to say hi. Hi, everybody. You know, we're just here to kick <laughs> this off and have some fun. And um, do me a favor, Indiana. Tell us, first of all, should I take this hat off? Or am I good? You guys let me know in the comments. I, think <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, silly. And, you know, that's what I hope was, you know, what I hope we are a little bit here. You know, this is supposed to be fun. We're kicking off the new year. We've got 14 speakers over the next couple days um, to today, tomorrow through the 8th. And they're they're speakers. They're world class, excellent speakers, success. They know all about world class success. And uh, I'm just so excited that you're here. And um, what I think we should start with is you telling us all about you rather than me reading your bio and all that stuff. <laughs> tell me what you got going on. I see um, you in the background. Yeah. Well, this is, I'm here with my co-host, uh, my co-friend here, Wes. Yeah. Um, Wes is our mascot. Um, I'm, I'm the CEO and founder of We Do. Um, and I've spent the last 30 years working in technology and in creative industries I've been a founder five times, so um, I've had my share of really hard times and, you know, grit. And um, But, yeah, most of that journey, when you look back, is all based on, you know, kind of my life purpose and how I, you know, kind of always made choices throughout my life. And and now I'm doing something that's very similar. Um, there's a pattern that we all create because of our our sense of self and our sense of purpose and who we want to be. Um, I had three kids. I uh, took a little detour for a while uh, when my when my ex left us. And like most mothers of three who have three very small children do, I decided to become a rock star and I got a record deal and I went on tour and I did, you know, when I look back at that and think, what, what was I thinking? But it all led to, to where I am today. Um, and it was a really great experience and my kids got to go on tour with me. And, um, and following that, I built a, a piece of technology. I built a, um, a company called Kerchoons, which was a, a response, a direct response to a problem in the music industry at the time uh, with downloads and streaming and piracy. And, you know, I fought with pirates and became the bitch of the Internet for a while with all the peer to peer people. Um, but that all led, you know, all 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 roads lead to now, like they say. Right. So when you go back and connect the dots, you position where you are because of your your journey. And I think the you know, big part of it is journey. Um, you know, you don't have to have all the answers at the moment. You're learning as you go, and uh, that's what life's all about. It's a great so. hat, right? With you yeah. at all moments. <laughs> I don't think my hat's as cool as yours, though. Um, <laughs> you know, the other thing, too, you're not in the United States. Uh, where are you right now? I think that's important for people. Yeah, to yeah. Right, right now I'm in Spain. I'm in Valencia. Um, I've lived in Europe for about 30 years. I, I go back and forth between the United States and, and, and Europe quite a lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm halfway between Glasgow half the year and, and Spain at the moment. I'm, you know, contemplating whether I move to America or not. I don't know if it's you the go. same country oh, I remember sure. or not. So <laughs> it's snowing and you'll be perfect with your hats. 
all yes, year round. No. <laughs> nice and cool. I, you know, I kind of feel I'm not as cool as you are with my hat, so I'm going to put on a different one. <laughs> <laughs> you be you. You be you. you. Be you. I'm going to be me with this one. There we go. Very good. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, in all seriousness, not, um, there's, we have on the Best Ever You Network this tradition every year. We pick a word, uh, our community picks, each person in the community picks a word. And this year we hashtagged it one word 2023. Thank you for putting my book back there. I'm trying to get it. Older man. That's right. There's a change guidebook. Um, you don't have to do that, but. I'll do it like you. this. Yeah. Um, Go ahead and tell me. Read it. from it later, Indy. Um, <laughs> <kidding. laughs> but anyway, we pick up a, we pick a word for the year. Um, each person in the community picks a word and that's kind of the word they anchor in for the year. And our conference speakers did that as well this year. So everybody has a word that they've chosen. You can follow along online and social media. It's hashtag one word 2023. I need you to market my book always. Um, and you have picked purpose. And um, I love this word. And I want to before I ask you more about your word, we're keeping our hats on, by the way. Do I look all right? <laughs> <Can't be laughs> <bad on>. Whatever. <laughs> um, purpose um, is your word. But before I do that, I want to talk about you as a kid. Do you mind going there and telling? Because I think it ties into your purpose. And, you know, sometimes to find our purpose, we go through struggles and things like that. Can you talk about you as a kid and some of the things you went through? Sure. Um, you know, I was born in the Midwest. Uh, I had a very early on, um, my teacher in the first grade realized I had a very strong speech impediment. Um, I'd had earaches, you know, from the age of three all the way to the age of six. And I spoke out of the side of my mouth and I stuttered and I just decided to be more of a recluse. And, um, you know, the teacher was trying to get me involved in class and I would shy away because I didn't want to have to be embarrassed by speaking. And I'd already gone through that hassle in kindergarten and at church and things. Um, and so they, they moved me into um, a, a group of kids, other kids in the school. That, and I, I had a, a speech therapist for several years and worked with her. And one of the things she encouraged me to do was uh, to sing and play piano and to write poetry. And that kind of put me on a path of, you know, going into music and creativity. Um, and yeah, it's been around, I don't know, nine years doing that. Um, you know, learning how to talk again. And, and, and I think, you know, other things happened. Uh, my father had a pretty bad accident. So, we didn't have money. He was in the hospital for several months and my grandfather had a stroke and I was a middle kid out of four. Um, and so I, I just kind of learned to to pretend and create and become innovative with what we had. Um, and I think that's maybe part of how I, you know, formed my personality in those early years um, just through sheer Necessity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Necessity. I love it. All right. All right. Talk about purpose. Like, why did you choose the word purpose for this? And should I take off my hand? <laughs> <laughs> I think purpose is uh, one of these enigmas a lot of people don't stop as stop often to think about, but it's really what drives you as a human being. And whether you know it or not, yeah. your path tends to lead to your purpose. I always think, you know, I'm not. I'm not very religious, but I always think of the Bible story of Jonah and the whale. It's like your your inner self knows where it needs to go. But if you fight against your purpose, you're going to take a lot of detours and you end up there anyway. And so I feel like purpose is one of these um, things that give you give you that real direction that most people want in their lives and i'm not, not talking about setting goals at the beginning of the year this is more about core value like what's inside you yeah and i just feel like it's a really strong way to start a year to really consider purpose um and and your sense can be very personal how you feel and you may change over time the purpose that you set forth in your life maybe 40 years ago 30 years ago 20 years ago however old you are it evolves, it grows, you know, and it grows with the way you grow as a human, like your, 
confidence levels or your acumen of what you feel capable of, which has to do with your confidence over time, the wisdom that you achieve or lessons you've learned or adversity you faced. Um, all fall into place on what kind of this overarching life purpose story is. So if you think in terms of like, say, um, a fiction book where the hero starts out, he faces some adversities, and by the end of the story, he's changed. And humans do that too, not just characters and books. Um, otherwise, you know, why would we be writing these stories? Because they resonate with us. But that's why I chose purpose. That was long winded answer wouldn't it oh no I, I love it, it yeah. people are is it time for me well. to change my hat yet i mean uh, you, you can you can if you want to it means you got to take the ear i'll change mine again i'll put the georgetown <laughs> one back on look it's at my at the me. end of the day my hair is in the <laughs> headphones <laughs> on i'll just like stack mine on top i get my <laughs> just keep them going <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you're not laughing at yourself, I don't know. That there's a, there's something there for sure. Um, what do you do if you don't? You know, if you're here, you're listening, you're here at Best Ever Year, you're at the summit and everything, you just don't have a, have a handle, handle on your purpose quite yet. Like you, you're like, why am I here exactly? Sometimes I, I think we do that anyway. Even if we <laughs> think we know, we know, it's like, well, like well, we're well, here. Yeah, I mean, I think that people people feel. Like maybe their sense of purpose, you know, there, 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 there are a couple of things that happen to people, right? You, you have a sense of direction in your life and then you get hit really hard by something and it knocks you back. Yeah, yeah. So let's say, you know, you said a, you said a purpose or an intention and you say, I'm going to work on this because I really love to help people. Let's say your purpose is to help others and that you, everything you do, whether you're building an application or whether you, whatever that is you've decided that that's what really, really motivates you, the sense of helping others. Um, and so let's say you get knocked back for a while and you can't, you can't achieve whatever you've set. That's when a lot of people feel like it's muddy time. It's like messy, messy, or they feel um, demotivated or burnt out or lacking energy. And that's when it's a good time to go back and reflect on what are your values and passions and what matters most to you. Because most of the time when you lose your spark in life, it has a lot to do with um, not doing things you love to do, right? Or not being in like energy that feels good to you. And I think that this is when really going back to a, a a reflection period where you reflect on your values, reflect on your passions, what matters most to you, what do you enjoy and find fulfilling, what, what your, you know, your purpose can be connected to your values, your, your passions, you want to con consider your strengths and your abilities and how you've changed and come up with a new set of goals or desires or things that you want to work on uh, in order for your purpose to, to light up again, you know. We're like bundles of energy, you know, and sometimes the lights dim in, in us as, as we go through life and face adversities. Um, and it's important that sometimes, you know, the reason why you go through an adversity is so you come out the other end with with a great <laughs> amount of you know, insight. And that's how we grow as humans. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. How, how has, has purpose, purpose been you in your career, career? and how opportunities that you've built? Like, how, how does that tie in? Well, I don't do anything in, unless it aligns with with mm -hmm. my sense of of value. Uh, you know, I don't I don't even pursue anything that I don't believe. Um, and in my situation, my I build things that help solve problems for people. Mm -hmm. I create things that um, you know either inspire or help to solve problems for humans, um, whether that's artistic or that's innovation. Those are kind of the two lenses I look at life in. Um, and so I think it's really, for me, on my, on my journey, um, it's played into taking decisions, uh, things like who to work with, who to hire, who to, who to play music with, um, and, and who I hang around, because if you don't have aligned goals, um, you know, you're like two, two oxen that one is really strong and one's weak, or you're, you're not, you know, you're not in a, a level See? space. Yeah. yeah. Energy where you, where you can connect properly, I think. Um, 
And that's another error that a lot of us make. We make do with people who are around us who probably aren't very good for our sense of where we want to, to be in terms of our goals, passions, and our purpose. And that can be, uh, that can suck the life or the energy away from you if you aren't careful to protect your energy. Um, and and you're here to fulfill that. And I think, I, you know, I truly believe that we're not just sparks of dust. We align with, uh, you know, with each other uh, in order to create our purpose, but we are also part of a, a, a more spiritual sense of, you know, who we are as beings, as souls or, or whatever. Um, and I think that, you know, we kind of come here knowing that and they erase our memory, you know, <laughs> and then we go through life, right? Yeah. And we lose our path. And that's part of the game, isn't it? And that's part of the big matrix or the big game of, of how we do this. And, and, you know, the reason why I believe that so strongly is because of, of wisdom, of time, of, of yeah. having communicated with, you know, the other side. I think that as human beings, we need to be very sensitive to who we are, why we're here, and not let all of the game affect us as much as it does, you know, especially when it comes to politics or economics. Nothing should stop you from fulfilling your sense of purpose in, in, in life. And um, ultimately, the, the, the biggest word of all is love, isn't it? So finding your sense of purpose also leads to love. Um, self-love and, and love for others and that kind of more ubiquitous, ubiquitous love that's universal to to everyone and all beings so that's why you know i think purpose is a pretty darn important word for all of us well i think so too you know last night on our in our pre-conference workshop we were talking about oscillating between risk versus reward with respect to change and talking about mm -hmm. how people when they want to change something they're kind of going, going to happy waters and waving around and oscillating, you know, doing all that stuff because they can't see, like, if I make this change, the outcome. And mm. so fear creeps in and the consist, you know, the, the, just the, the fear of change and, and all that stuff comes in. But yeah. with that, um, it can be what I mean, where I'm trying, trying to tie that into is purpose, because, you know, if you feel like you've got a strong purpose and it requires a huge change to get there, it can be really, really choppy. And some of the people that come into play right there are those naysayers or dream crashers or, you yeah. know, dream crashers, whatever they are. And so yeah. I'm sitting here going, yeah. So if you've got something where you're going from here to there or something that you've always wanted to do, it's so important. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, if you've ever purple. played Pac-Man, if you've ever played Pac-Man, Elizabeth, that's it. Exactly. You <laughs> got to eat the cherries up before the ghosts come to get you. Yeah. You know? And this is the thing. A lot of that, a lot of that is, is it intuitively, you know, that you are, you know, you're a, you're a spirit within you. When you point to yourself, you point to your heart. Nobody ever points to their brain, no. but we think we can think thing, you know, think our way out of things and fear comes in um, to, to kind of fog who we are as human beings. And the challenge is to get away from the ghost, to make sure you're, you're, you know, you're the Pac-Man. You go, yeah. you go through all the mazes, right. To get yeah. to the, to get to the prize. And, and the prize in life isn't what a lot of people think it is. It's actually that, that sense of being and that sense of wholeness that allows us to be able to move on, you know, um, later in life as we die or not knowing when we may die. Cause the one thing that sure is, uh, certain really and taxes isn't but death is um and and it's so i think you know being part of uh being part of the of, of the the souls and the people who are here right now and taking this opportunity for what it is is a beautiful opportunity to be alive um out of the billions and billions and billions of people you know for millions of years who've ended up here um the fact that you're here is quite extraordinary and so protect that and 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 think about and reflect on what are you really here to do mm, right? i love it i'm not ending on that i'm going to keep going that's a that's a powerful <laughs> ending but we're going to keep going and i'm going to switch my hat <laughs> you know? why do you think your hats right? I don't know, I don't know. I like it. i'm going to send you a beret <laughs> it's just kind of, kind of fun um <laughs> 
no, it, it gets hot actually. That's why I just did that. I'm like, okay, that one's kind of hot. <laughs> it's an outdoor <laughs> hat that's fleece lined meant for a football <laughs> game or something. But um, okay, talk about happiness because who doesn't want to be happy? Quite frankly, you know, it's way better to be happy than sad. And how does that, is it necessary though for purpose? Do you have to be happy all the time? And we have, you know, it's, it's hard to be happy all the time, but boy, wouldn't that be fun? How does that all tie into to happy, happiness and purpose? I think, I think purpose helps, helps make you a happier person when you are following uh, that intrinsic drive inside of yourself can make you feel happier. But I think what's more profound is, is joy. Um, mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people confuse the two. You don't need to be happy to be working on your purpose. It, and it really depends on the definition of happy. Some people think happiness is being giddy in love and, uh, you know, having fallen in love and the kind of like glow that you have and la la la, or that you're smiling all the time. You know, sometimes you feel really happy and you just, you're overwhelmed with a sense of joy that you're crying almost, right? But do you, what what is happy? You know, happy just seems like such a, a hard word to to describe i think happy is more fleeting whereas a true sense of contentment and joy inside you is a lot stronger and probably something that's more theoretically stable to to aim at that kind of sense of calm it's sort of like yeah sure we all are afraid of things you were talking about change people people like to things to stay the same they don't want to shake things up um but when you when you take that small risk and realize that you didn't get your head chopped off, nothing happened to you, you know, you didn't lose all your friends like you thought you would. And you actually, you know, you or whatever that is you're doing yeah. because you've made a change um, and you, re you realize that you survived change and we change is inevitable. It changes all day long, no matter how consistent or, you know, routine your life is. So I think it's really more about understanding who your sense of selves who you are inside of you and spending a little bit more time with yourself and less time maybe listening to the yappy 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 nippy nippy dogs out there right because the world is full of all sorts of nonsense right everybody's telling you one thing the other thing it's a joke right and you're the only person who can decide i'm not an expert elizabeth i can't tell you what your purpose is or how to chart your path to purpose I can't tell anyone that I can tell you where to go inside to find it. Right. But I can't, I can't do that for you. Other people can't do what for you, what you need to do for yourself. Right. And I think this is where a lot of, um, a lot of the Disney movies when, when, when she goes and meets the prince or he meets the princess and they live happily ever after all these kind of stories. Hallmark <laughs> channel. <laughs> the Hallmark channel. Oh, like, it's a total nonsense, yeah. right? Yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know, purpose is a lot more about joy and that serenity and the contentment that you can have uh, that helps you aspire to, to fulfill a, a higher purpose, something that's bigger than you. And I think almost all of us, we go through the stages of ego in our life where it's all about my career, my life, my me, whatever that is, right? When you're really young. And I know there are a lot of adults who still do that, but just consider them uninvolved, right? You should go through this a little bit earlier in life if you haven't yet. Try to go through it as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> the kind of me, 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 right? Yeah. And then when you realize that there's a higher purpose, a sense of, of, of participating, creating, doing something that's bigger than you, yeah. that requires conviction, that really motivates most people and that drives them to fulfill their purpose. Um, you may be, when you're younger, you want to be an NBA superstar, you shoot the hoops, you do some slam ducks, all of a sudden you're, you're Magic Johnson, right? You get to the top and you feel unfulfilled. It's because you have a purpose beyond that. You know, now, now magic has 
a lot of charity work, a lot of extraordinary things that he's done um, since being an NBA basketball player. He'll go out down in the Hall of Fame for being you know, one of the greatest, Michael Jordan, one of the greatest. Uh, but he's gone on to to do something bigger than himself, to fulfill, to change more lives than just his own. And I think that that's where most of us, um, we strive for in a, in a way, whether we're working in a soup kitchen, doing something for our, our community, looking after maybe animals or nature or hum other humans. Um, we all kind of realize at some point, and sometimes that's family and love and, and looking after, you know, a broader a broader scope in your family or looking after a loved one. But we all realize a purpose that's outside of ourselves at some point during this life. And that's generally when we feel the most fulfilled. And I think that awesome. this is a really strong piece of, of what purpose is. And then purpose uh, for your business, purpose for your personal life, uh, purpose for, you know, maybe a goal you have as a couple. There, there's a lot of applications to purpose. You know, you wear a lot of different hats as a human. <laughs> that's why we have so many hats on today. You asked me why. I was waiting for you to that. It's the change guidebook. I'm just I don't have to your, <laughs> I'm advertising Elizabeth's book today. I don't I don't have anything to sell you, so um I'm just gonna sell Elizabeth's book. You can get it on Amazon. <laughs> Thank you. It'll give you a better view of it. It's the one with the light bulb. People. <laughs> those light bulb moments. Oh, we got on your wrist. That's cute. Are those hair bows? Or, yeah. Or those, is that your I'm not wearing I do that all the time, too. I got hair yeah. bows everywhere. Is it <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, when, when you're doing granny style, right? It's, uh, <laughs> We've seen the guy on TikTok. There's this guy who's like, he just kind of puts his family on TikTok. I gotta, I'll write his name in the comments. But he went yesterday and found all the rolls of chapstick in his house that people have, his life has got one in his purse, one by the, one in the car, one by the counter, <laughs> one upstairs, one by the bed. One by the, he found like 50 rolls of chapstick and it was hilarious. I'm like, my, my husband always, there's hair bows and chapstick throughout this house. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. It's like, until you, live, you, until you, li you live in the Northeast. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's uh, the yeah, change guidebook, out. guys. How to align your heart's truth and energy to find success in all areas wow. of your life by Elizabeth Hamilton Garino. Yeah, you know what was cool about Garino. that book? Just so, you, just so you know, it was really so much fun to write, and with HCI as your publisher and everything, and just they're great people. But what's in that book that's really cool are, are the twenty stories from the other people. I think oh, that's. Okay. I think that's what makes it so resonating with people about change. Cause I didn't want to write a book about change and leave everybody alone going, well, it's up to you. I wanted yeah. to bring in people who had kind of gone through the same thing. So, so people didn't feel alone and scared and all those things that go with change. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that, but it the end of the book, I'm giving away the end of the book. It talks about what we're talking about here is like impact and, mm. and your purpose and all those things and turning around when you think you've got it, you know, you've got yourself kind of under control and you know your way and your purpose and things like that and changing a life and doing something for other people and stuff. And some people seem like they're wired that way from the get go. Yeah. And some people have to learn it and things like that. But I think it's key to learn while you're here. Um, is there anything we got to go because we have two minutes left of this <laughs> while. Um, but is there anything you haven't talked about that you want to talk about? Like, I, I think we I think we kind of covered purpose. Are what are what what channels are we on right now? We're on LinkedIn and Facebook. We're on like five different channels on Facebook, and then we're live on LinkedIn, and then okay. we'll have free replay for everybody too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you guys uh, follow my newsletter on LinkedIn? I'm uh, writing some insightful stuff. I've only uh, published a couple of it, but that's one of the freebie things I can give to you. And I'll be doing a review of Elizabeth's book on my newsletter. Um, and yeah, I did, I've done a couple. I think we have like six or seven hundred people who subscribe pretty quickly. Yeah. And so feel free to subscribe to the, the newsletter. And I promise you it'll be entertaining. I write crazy stuff. Like oh, about, my gosh. Yeah. Talk about the cat one. I mean, you and I love cats. What do we, <laughs> we have five cats between us that are all rescued. I mean, I rescue all my cats. The yeah. one running around here, Mel, runs in the background of everything I do. And she's a feral cat turned love. Yeah. Um, why do you love cats so much? And um, <laughs> I just, you can them. compare them with so many different aspects to life. They have so many different characteristics. It's like really fun to, 
it's really fun to think about cats and, and write about cats. Um, I just, I love them. I love the way they just kind of cuddle into you and like lie on you and they're just really cuddly and warm. Um, I love dogs too. We have, we have five cats and two dogs. So. Five cats, that's right. So we have eight cats between us. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That one blog, what's the name of that blog you wrote? It had the rock star kitty in it. That was a really cool blog. <laughs> I, it, it, I love that. I'm going to post that on best ever you. Do you remember what that was called again? Uh, um, yeah. I, just, I think it was just a comparison of cats and it's on my LinkedIn page. Okay. It's a comparison of cats here. with freelancers. Like, and it, like yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. I had, I had a couple glasses of wine and wrote that. So that was genius. So <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, you're here, everybody. Thank you for being with us. At oh yeah. Conference. And and go yeah. download the app guys. Go, oh, go, uh, go sign up for we do.ai. Do. Yeah. It's coming soon uh, to a, to a webmosphere near you. That's yeah, can all. we get that on our iPhones right now? Like, can I go do that yet? You can go register um, your phone number and stuff on it, and okay. and we'll get we'll get you an email over um, if you're in the United States. If you're in the UK and Europe, I think it's live. I think you can go and download and do stuff on it and play around. Just be part of our, the hippies who join an app when, that's completely unstable and not totally ready yet. But perfect, break it, guys. It's fun. <laughs> and then you get to report in the bugs. And but yeah. you know what's cool about that is you and get buy, and buy the book. Yeah. Buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about new apps too is you guys listen. Like if there's feedback or way you want it to work differently or anything like that, it's cool to be on on board right in the beginning because you see it change and it's super neat. Yeah, yeah. yeah grow and everything and and people buy in and all the good stuff. So anyway, all right. Well, much love to you. Well, thanks, thanks for, for hanging here. out with me. Thanks for all the yeah. hats. Oh yeah, I've I've got. I, uh, I'll, t I'll do one more. I'll end on the Georgetown one because it's powerful. yeah. And happy 2023, everybody who turned up. Uh, really great to see y'all. Yep. We will um, see you all through the conference. Again, 14 speakers. The next person up is at 2 o'clock today, Eastern time, I think. I, I actually don't have the schedule in front of me. <laughs> Whatever. Go to the website. <laughs> go to the website. Go to besteveryou.com. And um, the summit's right there. It's Best Ever You 2023. And you can still register and get the downloads and all that good stuff. So, all right. Purpose in, with Indiana, Greg. Thank you, Indiana. Thank you all Thank for you listening. Guys. All right. Take care, everybody.